In the last lecture, we have seen how it is possible to dynamically balance rotating objects which are of large size and it is not possible to place them on balancing machines. Now, we have seen how disc like objects of large size can be balanced in its own position that is what we call as field balancing. What in today's lecture we will see that the same technique can be extended to rotor like objects for complete dynamic balancing keeping the object in its own position. So, here also we keep the rotor in its own position and the instrumentation required will not be very elaborate, but just like in the case of discs. We can connect it to a small device which we call sine wave generator and we have pickups at the two ends and of course, we have a dual beam oscilloscope. So, the sine wave generator is connected to one and the vibration pickups are either connected to this pickup which we call the near end pickup. near end in the uh, what we mean that it is nearer to the sine wave generator. And this is called the far end and this is the far end pickup. Now, as before what we can do we can rotate the rotor at sufficient speed so that we get measurable vibrations through the pickups at the near end and far end and at the same time the sine wave generator produces a reference sine wave. So, the first test is first run. and this is the first run is run the rotor at a suitable speed. So, that we get uh, measurable vibration say a suitable speed omega. Then the near end what we will get here as we know already that oscilloscope output will be giving a reference
reference sine wave and the other one say near end will be something like this. and the far end so this oscilloscope signals what we get tells that this is the phase lead of the near end response or near end sine wave which you get and this is the far end. So, the near end response we get as n 1 vector and obviously, it is the reference is here reference vector is nothing but the sine wave generator. So, this will be similarly at the far end again the reference will be the same and the vector representing the vibration of the far end is so let us see again what we have done it is being rotated at a suitable speed so that the far near end pickup and far end pickup produces reasonably measurable signal so the sine wave generator is producing a signal as a reference then the vibration of the near end is being measured like this and the vibration of the far end is given by this. So, these all of these are harmonic functions of time because it is a case of forced vibration and in all cases the frequency of vibration is matching with the speed of rotation. So, all these signals are of same frequency. Next what we do? We stop the machine and let us see the near end and far end phases. This is the near end phase. This is the far end phase. What we do? We measure we have a datum reference line marked and attach a trial mass m t at the near end at a known radius at a known position. this is a datum. When you do that then and again after attaching this trial mass at the near end phase of course, you have to keep in mind that these are also the chosen uh, planes for putting our balancing masses or taking out material just diametrically opposite location of the balanced mass or balancing mass as I have said in the previous lecture. Now, if we run the rotor at the same speed and then again we measure the vibration of the near end and far end. What we get now? Now, what we will find that the effect of this trial mass which we place at the near end will be obviously more at the near end uh, vibration. 
So, what we will have now? The vibration of the near end is now N2. And this is the reference as before. So, this angle is the lead angle of the wave which is found in the oscilloscope with respect to the uh, reference sine wave signal. Now, when we did not attach the trial mass, the vibration of the near end was this. So, this vector this represents the effect of on near end vibration So, this is the original vibration without any trial mass m t n, this is the vibration of the near end with the trial mass. So, obviously, this difference is the effect of the trial mass on the. Similarly, the vibration measured at the other end that is the far end will be something like this. So, the original vibration without m t n was f 1. So, therefore, this extra the increase that is f 2 minus f 1 that represents the effect of m t n on far end vibration. Remember these vectors are all rotating like rigid body with the same speed as this and real quantity is the component along this which represents that means this is the way we represent a harmonically varying quantity. Okay. Next what we do? We take out this m t n, remove it and put another mass and we call that mass as m t f at again another known radius or known radius distance at a known position from a datum drawn on this. Then again we run at the same speed and the vibration at the near end and far ends are again measured both in amplitude and in phase. Then what we get? So, we must complete also this second run, we have already completed attach a trial mass at the near end at a known radius and at a known known angular position given by phi t phi m t n. 
then the third run run at omega third run is remove mtn and attach i have not mentioned because place is not there attach mtn to the near end to the far end at a known radius and angular position phi m t f run at omega. So, now we again measure and we get n 3. So, if this is the vibration at the near end without any attached mass, then this must be the effect of this is the effect of MTF on the near end vibration. Similarly, at the far end the vibration is measured and we may get the far end vibration F 3, the original one was this without anything. So, this f 3 minus f 1, this must be the effect of m t f on far end vibration. Okay. So, now let us see what we can do after this. What we have to do ultimately we have to place balancing masses like say m b n and m b f. So, how you do it? Now, you have to remember that once this m t n is changed to this m b n and m t f is changed to m b f, then when both are placed there, the total vibration at the near end and far end should be 0. That is the effect of m b n on near end vibration and far end vibration plus effect of m b f on near end vibration and far end vibration when you sum total the near end vibration should be just minus n 1 to cancel the original effect when no mass was attached and the total effect here on the far end should be minus f 1 to cancel the effect of the original unbalance present in the rotor. Now, we have seen in the previous class that how we 
uh, represent this uh, vector quantities. So, we will use that what we will do we will have two vector operators alpha which is equal to alpha e to the power i phi alpha and beta equal to beta e to the power i phi beta. Now, when two vectors like a is represented by a e to the power i phi a and b is equal to b e to the power i phi b. When you multiply these two vectors, then what we get? We get a vector whose magnitude is the product of the two magnitudes and their phase is given by the sum. So, if we remember this, then let us see that what we have to find out that m b n, if we represent by a vector because it has a magnitude and it has an angular position that is direction, which is equal to alpha operated upon m t n trial mass position is known. So, if I know alpha then I multiply m t n by alpha to get m b n and then we will get this will be alpha m t n the magnitude will be the product and phase or angular location will be shifted by Similarly, the balancing mass at the far end can be written as a product of beta with m t f that is also can represented by a complex quantity or a vector because that also has a magnitude and direction. This will be then beta m t f that will be the magnitude so if we can find out alpha and beta that means we find out the quantity alpha and phi alpha and quantity beta and phi beta then we can find out the magnitude and position of the balancing masses but what is the condition condition is that when this is placed or simultaneously total effect at the near end should be minus n 1 and total effect on the far end should be minus f 1. So, let us see how we represent it mathematically. So, what is the effect of m t n at the near end this one. So, what will be the effect of alpha into m t n at the near end it will be alpha vector this is the effect of m b n at the near end plus what will be the effect of m b f at the near end it will be beta into what is the effect of far end at the near end it is f 3 So, this will be the effect of m b f at the near end and this total should be minus n 1 which was originally present. So, when everything is together it is 0. Similarly, what will be the effect of m b n at the far end it will be alpha into and the effect of m b f at the far end this will be 
effect of we are doing the far end this is effect of uh, sorry we made a mistake effect of this is the effect of mtn at the near end so effect of alpha mtn will be alpha into this effect of mtf at the near end is this so effect of beta mtf will be this and that total must be this similarly here this is the effect of mtn at the far end so effect of alpha mtn at the far end will be alpha into this effect of mtf at the far end is this so effect of beta mtf that is mbf will be this and this has to be minus f so we get now n21 minus n1 n2 minus n1 n3 minus n1 all these things can be graphically found out then only thing what we have to do we have to solve this uh, simultaneous equation so what we do we multiply this by uh, f3 minus f1 so we get alpha into plus beta similarly beta or alpha we multiply this one by n3 minus n1 is the standard thing so we subtract this or change the sign and add whatever you may say so what we get alpha n2 minus n1 into f3 minus f1 minus n3 minus n1 into f2 minus f1 this cancels is equal to f1 into n3 minus n1 minus n1 into f3 minus f1 so finally we get so we finally get alpha vector as Similarly, we, can, we will find out beta also and which will be in this case of course you have to multiply this by n2 minus n1 and this by f2 minus f1 and then subtracting one from another we will get
I think this is just solving simultaneous equation. So, what ultimately solving these quantities by graphical construction it will give you alpha e to the power i phi alpha this will be beta. So, at the near end this is the reference or datum our near end trial mass was here at a known angle. What we have to do? We have to change this product as and you have to place it, you have to shift it by this and the mag this is equal to nothing but alpha if you keep the radius same of course, because it is actually the product of the eccentricity and the mass which is important, but just to uh, make the writing less complicated we are assuming that they are all placed at the same radial direction uh, distance. So, that uh, is missing here, but otherwise you can all the time keep the product of the two as the real quantity <laughs> at the far end. if this is the original trial mass you have kept, then we have to shift it to this position what it will be which is same as beta into m t f and its distance angular position will be phi beta. So, therefore, you can see that even a rotor can be if it is too big then it is not necessary to bring it to a machine and it can be balanced in its own location. Now, this uh, particular method which I have shown where we have used a sine wave generator and vibration pickup and a double beam oscilloscope. I think as we have mentioned in the case of disc like objects here also you can solve the problem of field balancing using only a vibration meter which will give you the amplitude of vibration. But in that case we have to again put each trial mass diametrically opposite position and also at right angles as we have done in case of uh, single plane balancing that is a disc balancing and then we will have a many more readings and the computation will be far more complicated, but you can yourself figure out the procedure how we can have or determine the position of the MBN and MBF for complete balancing using only a vibration meter. The other last thing which I would like to mention briefly is that so far we have considered this balancing problems where all these objects or the bodies were perfectly rigid, but uh, in actual practical situation it may happen that uh, a <coughs> rotor may not be perfectly rigid and it may have some uh, significant amount of deflection or elastic deformation. In such cases this methods will not work for that we have to follow a methodology which we call as the nodal balancing. So, that uh, that method is more complicated more involved and we will not discuss it here, but I just wanted to mention it. So, that you are aware of the problem. The other kind of rotary balancing problem is where the mass and geometry of the rotor rotating object is not a very definite one as you find in case of washing machines, where we put all the wet cloth which whose geometry or shape or mass they are all uncertain. In such cases a suitable technique is used for self balancing of the rotating objects that is also another very interesting uh, technique of uh, balancing rotating objects, but I think we will stop discussion on rotary balancing here and from the next lecture we will take up the problems of balancing machines where I think the systems involve reciprocating objects. Thank you.